In this series, we will take you with us on our three-week trip to Japan. So be prepared for breathtaking places, marvelous colors, and all the anime feels. Hello with a bit of an unusual voice. This is Mrs. Marv, and I will be your guide today. This first video will be covering the beginning of our journey, with a few days in Tokyo, to our trip to Odawara in Hakone. We landed at Narita Airport around 5.30pm after a grueling 15-hour flight. So we went to the Narita Express platform to take the train and had the first vending machine drinks of many. When we got to a hotel around 9pm, we were on our feet already for more than 25 hours. So we just checked in, went for a quick konbini run for instant ramen and sweets. The grape juice was a bit sweet, but we really loved the arrangement of sweets we got. We got donuts with condensed milk and honey, we got some fudge chocolate and some instant ramen. The next morning greeted us with the loveliest sunrise and wonderful weather. Our hotel was located directly beside Meiji Jingo Stadium, which gave us a pretty unique view. So that day we decided to just take it slow and explore the neighborhood a bit. We took a walk to Shinjuku Station, visited Yoyogi Park on our way, which already showed some of the early signs of autumn colors on the trees. And then we went to see the iconic Meiji Jingu Shrine. We also explored quite a bit of Meiji Jingu's garden and enjoyed the peaceful atmosphere there under the marvelous old trees. For the upcoming Labor Day, there was an artistic display of various harvested vegetables. Afterwards, we slowly made our way towards Shibuya. By the time we ended up in Shibuya, we were both quite hungry. So we were on our first mission to score food. <laughs> and thankfully, we ended up in the ramen place, which had a vending machine to order, which made things significantly easier. But still, figuring it out for the first time was still a bit of a challenge. During our trip to Japan, it was also the 100th birthday of Hachiko, the famous Akita dog. So there was quite a number of people around the statue and it was hard to really get a picture. We also went to see the famous Shibuya crossing that day and after went to a skyscraper to get a bit of a more panoramic view over Tokyo, which gave us the first look on the sheer dimension this city has. When the sun set that day, we also had a first look at the Mugiwara store in Shibuya. And after, we just simply called it a day because the jet lag was kind of catching up to us. So we just went back to the hotel. Our second day we started in Omote Sando, which was pretty close to the location of our hotel. So we went there for a nice breakfast of fluffy souffle pancakes. And then we just continued our way towards Harajuku and Takeshita Street. For our liking, it was pretty filled to the brim with people. It's a quite touristy destination and we wanted to check it off our list, but we left rather early after just taking some pictures and rather quickly walking through the street than actually enjoying it. We then continued towards the Tokyo Plaza because I personally wanted to take a picture at their mirrored entrance. Afterwards, we just ended up in Shibuya again. 
We had around four full days in Tokyo at the beginning of our trip and for some odd reason, for three of those days, we ended up in Shibuya at some point in time because we just like took it where it led us. We explored all the side streets that looked interesting and just like went from there. We then continued our way towards central Tokyo to visit Hie Shrine and to our surprise, it was also the day of the celebration of Shijiego san, so the celebration of the three, five, and seven year olds. So we could see all those families there with their kids running around, all dressed up in kimono, taking pictures. Something that was also very fascinating to us was the merging of modern and traditional architecture. The sun slowly started to set and we made our way towards the Imperial Castle, which is at the former site of Edo Castle. So it's surrounded by lots of greens, parks and moats and high stone walls. Unfortunately, right the day we were there, it was closed. So the only thing we could do was admire it from afar. But to us it was still worth it, it was still a quite impressive sight. We took a little ice cream break and then continued to stroll for a bit through Ginza and then we got on the train. Because at that point our feet were just completely wiped out from all the walking. We hopped on the Yurika Mome line towards Odaiba and we have to say this was one of the most scenic train rides we took in Tokyo. The Yurika Mome line was formerly called the Tokyo Waterfront New Transit Line and it truly lives up to the expectation. It's one of those trains that is fully automated now, so it's entirely controlled by computers with no drivers on board. At the Odaiba beach area they also had an interactive art exhibition that day, so we just enjoyed that for a bit and then called it a night. The next day we started with the obliquity visit to Shibuya Sky and we both felt being up there on this platform makes you grasp for the first time the enormous span this city has, like those 14 million people residing there. Because when you are in the city, it's, of course it's busy and there are a lot of people around, but not being able to see the end of this city was like truly magnificent. After we had some really delicious chicken for lunch and just decided to explore the Shibuya area for a bit more, so we discovered all the stores there and had a look at all the shops around. That night we also decided to check out the Christmas market which was close to our hotel. And although it was very interesting to see what they had to offer, especially that there were so many German things which we also have at our Christmas markets, 
we just took like a short stroll over the market, looking at everything, enjoying a bit of the dance performance and then we just called it a night. Our journey continues one hour south, to the city of Odawara. We decided it was a great idea to take public transport shortly after rush hour <laughs> with two big suitcases. But in the end we were all fine, it was just shortly over an hour, but still we were quite happy once we arrived. So we locked up our suitcases and made our way towards Odawara castle and just enjoyed a konbini breakfast there. Odawara was also a nice change of scenery for us. After the big and almost stressful life in Tokyo, it was nice to experience something more smaller and more cozy. And also the weather was really different because Odawara is a bit more south and bordered by the Hakone Mountains and Sagami Bay of the Pacific Ocean. It was significantly colder because the wind was so harsh, but it was still quite enjoyable. We also really enjoyed exploring Odawara Castle. The castle was originally built in the middle of the 15th century, but destroyed several times through attacks and earthquakes. In the 1960s, it was rebuilt to its current state. We also really enjoyed the exhibition they host within the castle with a numerous variety of items. And after you finish the exhibition, you can also go to the rooftop area of the castle where you can have a really nice panoramic view over the coastal area and the mountains surrounding Odawara.
Following our visit to the castle, we explored a bit more of the neighborhood and then made our way to Miyuki Beach. And right at the beach, the winds were really strong. We passed some more time and then went back to the station to pick up our luggage. And we also had our first handmade mochi there, made by the kindest elderly man. And soon after, our bus was already leaving for the next stop of our trip, which was Hakone. 